Hey again, viewers, welcome back to Underdog Garage. Today we're doing a replacement on an intake manifold on a Volkswagen 2 liter TSI engine. So we have a 2013 Volkswagen GLI and a check engine light came on when we ran a diagnostic on it, the code P2015 came up. That code indicates a intake manifold runner position circuit fault. Now what that is on this being a 2013, this engine, the car manufacturer uh, date was after the improved intake manifold. So this already had an, the improved version. So we know it's not that. Uh, but it could be a result of a sensor failure or uh, carbon buildup. Well, either way, it's a component, it's a whole component, so we're going to replace that, and uh, we'll bring you along so you can see how we get into this thing and, uh, and the, uh, all the hoses and the connectors and the sensors, and there, there are several areas where you can get into trouble on this, but we made sure to take some footage so that we can document how to, uh, how to stay out of trouble on this thing. And so come along with us, and uh, let's see what we can do to get this thing fixed. The first step that we got to do is to get all of the uh, air box elements out of the way. Not difficult, but gives us lots of room to work. This job will give you lots of practice on getting connectors removed and not breaking them, hopefully. So the airbox had two bolts mounting it to the front grille. Once we got those undone, you kind of had to snorkel it out over the vacuum line. Sorry for the blocked camera view, but it's no way to get in there to release the uh, fuel pressure. We got a rag in place, and what I had done is just barely crack that fitting to reduce uh, or remove the pressure. Here I'm removing uh, one of the many vacuum hose connections and I'm using the spring hook to just barely get uh, down along that hose, not puncture it at all, but make sure it comes off easily. Underneath where those vacuum hoses connect, there's a small connector connecting into the intake manifold. So here I'm getting that undone. What we're doing here is just removing the uh, fuel line bracket on the top of the manifold, the intake manifold. Just a process of getting down to the core piece of the repair. We did try to keep bolts together with the parts they came off with just so we knew going back on what, what went with what. Next we had to remove a bracket underneath the intake manifold that connected to two of the coolant lines. Take your time and in, in this repair if you've taken this on Take your time, the connectors, the routing of the connectors, the vacuum hoses. There's lots of bits and parts connected to this intake manifold. What we had done in uh, taking a look at the schematics and the information we could find is we just counted all of the vacuum hoses and the connectors so that we were mindful of, okay, where are they? What are the ones that we need to avoid? And there are several underneath that you really got to be careful, especially the throttle body uh, area or you can uh, yank that connector loose if you're not careful. Here I'm removing a bracket that supports a number of the connectors and I felt that it was it was going to be an advantage to get it out of the way and it did work out better to 
to just have it dismounted and loose. This is a fuel line support bracket that has to, to be removed so it could get the fuel line out of the way. So here we're undoing the bracket on the left side that holds two of the coolant lines. Now we're removing the inlet pipe going into the throttle body. And we had to use a pick tool and take our time sort of prying around the entire inlet pipe. After prying, we then could pull the inlet pipe down off the throttle body. Now we're working on the throttle body. There are four long screws that uh, mount the throttle body onto the intake manifold. This part was kind of tricky. Um, you had to, you weren't able to see the bolts, so you had to do it all by feel. The trickiest bolt was the back left really didn't have much uh, visibility on it and you just kind of had to guide everything in and then start unscrewing it and then get it out by hand. The other challenge is to make sure you don't lose that screw or that bolt down into the engine. We did drop one but fortunately lucked out and it landed on the garage floor. And success. Now we are finally down to what we've been working on, which is the actual bolts that mount the intake manifold to the head. So here I'm removing those. Now loosening them first. Now I'm starting to remove them. For safety's sake, I used a uh, magnet grab hold of those puppies. Didn't want them to get away from me. And this is where you do the wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Patience, a little bit of gentle persuasion. I'm very gently pulling. One last connector. Christmas tree clips holding the fuel injector, uh, the connectors. I wanted to remove that. It was easier to do it with the intake manifold flipped on its back. Once we had those connectors undone, uh, everything was separated and it was off the car. Well, here we finally have our intake manifold uh, with the injectors attached. And you can see the, uh, the fault on this is this gate valve. And this, this assembly right here, P2015, we have to replace the whole assembly. So that's what we're going to do. So now that we are ready to put the new intake manifold on, I was swapping parts from the old one, uh, putting the fuel rail on as well as some vacuum lines. We also switched out, um, replaced injector seals since the injectors came out of the engine block. And lastly, we did a carbon cleaning because this car is at 80,000 miles and the carbon buildup was awful. What I'm using here is the, uh, 
the tool for installing these injectors and getting them pushed down into place. And there's a very specific position that they need to go in. And it's pretty clear on the head. There's, it, it's about at a five o'clock position. So they can accommodate that electronic connector. But they were, uh, they were easy to put in. It was just a really good, firm, steady push. A little bit of clean oil on those O-rings so that we don't have any chafing. We can go to install. Shouldn't we be ready for the manifold install? I don't know, should we? I think we're ready. It's better get off the pot time, eh, people? Most important thing I was focusing on was making sure that I had the uh, intake aligned with the fuel injectors first. And then once I was happy with that, it was just moving in the same direction, getting it lined up. Starting the process of installing each of the bolts and then I would sequentially go through and tighten them. Because there is this um, a really good firm molded gasket, there's a lot of compression that happens when you start tightening this down. So as you come around and tighten one round, by the time you get around to the next, it's loose. So um, I was just bouncing around in sequence, lightly tightening until they all started to snug up. And that was a pre-torque sequence. It was nice and gentle, side to side, top to bottom. Taking my time. So for torquing down the manifold, according to our all data information, you first torque each bolt to three newton meters or 2.2 foot pounds. Once you've gotten all of them torqued to that spec, you then tighten them to nine newton meters or 6.64 foot pounds. So here we started installing the support bracket under the intake manifold and this was actually very tricky. You can see here this is where the bottom part of the support bracket goes into the engine block underneath the water pump. First thing I did was get the bracket into position and I connected it to the top mount on the intake manifold. But I connect it loosely so I can have some free play and move it around if I needed to. There's a connector with a thin wire that sort of wraps around the support bracket so you need to be careful you don't tear it when you're reinstalling. I think the best way to install the bottom bolt is to use a stubby triple square, um, but I ended up using a different tool. I ended up using a flex head ratchet and going underneath the AC line with a spider joint. Back together with the fuel line, which is pretty straightforward. 
just make sure I get everything in position before we start finger tightening. You get it into position, you can tighten down one side by hand, uh, just sort of spin it with your fingers. Then once you get the, do the same thing with the other side and you tighten it down to 18 newton meters, which is 13 foot pounds. And what we've done is we had tested what the hand feel looks uh, feels like on the torque wrench, so we had a, a good sense of what 18 was going to feel like. in the air intake hose on the throttle body, I would say it was the second most challenging part of this because it was a bit uh, mud wrestling with the uh, stubborn rubber hose in a very limited space. So we actually kind of made a mistake with this. Um, first we installed the throttle body with the hose on, but then we realized to get the bolts on you needed the hose off for the clearance, so we ended up taking the hose back off to get clearance to put the in throttle body bolts back on. So we didn't film the throttle body bolts going back in, but uh, here's the hose going back on and getting connected, reconnected to the throttle body. slid it onto the plastic air pipe and tighten it down. And it was all set to go. Next we connected some uh, the vacuum lines on top of the intake manifold. Got those back into place along with all the other connectors we had disconnected. Because there are so many connectors to uh, look after with this job, I had prepared a list of all the different connectors and literally had gone through and counted and recounted about five times. And I used some tape. You may see it in some of the footage. It's a uh, yellow uh, body shop tape that I put on the uh, engine area and had listed the connectors and the count and then was going through as we were connecting them. I was checking them all off to make sure we'd completed them all. Same thing with vacuum hoses. And I found that it's a really helpful tool to, to be mindful of, okay, how many connectors do I have to, to look after? And then uh, where, where generally are they located and going through and checking each one. And even with doing that, we still missed one. Now we're reinstalling the PCV hose. Now it's time to get the air box back in. So again, we kind of had to snorkel it back in, sort of reverse of how we took it out. Again, you see putting that vacuum line over. And then this vent hose goes down into a hole on the left side. Just checking to see and make sure it lined up with the grommets. So here I'm putting the inlet guide back in place. So. 
think they're two T25 or T27 bolts that hold the inlet onto the front of the car. Put the cover on top of the inlet. And one more bolt that I forgot to yeah. get the airbox secured. And last but not least, the MAF sensor connector. The hair pipe connected. We were ready to fire this thing up and find out if we royally screwed up or if we actually did it right. First time starting it. Fingers crossed we don't die. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh my gosh. Better. It's making noises. Hey, thanks viewers for coming along and uh, seeing what we uh, did on getting this repair done. We had a lot of fun doing it, loved sharing it with you. I uh, wanted to make the point that we did use OEM parts only and we waited until the parts came so we didn't have any trouble there. And a uh, nice little uh, tip, uh, there are a lot of uh, connectors and vacuum lines on this manifold, uh, easy to miss. So I wrote them all down, numbered them, and we double, triple checked as we went through the repair, especially at the end. And even at the end, after all of the counting that I had done, Pete still found one. And had we missed that one, this car wouldn't have started. We'd have been, you know, all over the place with the thing. So double, triple check, never hurts to make a list. So thanks guys for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Like this video, give it a thumbs up. Have any questions, thoughts, or comments on it, leave them in the comment box below. We love for, to hear from you. Yeah. Love to hear your thoughts. And uh, if you haven't seen the other videos related to this repair, we actually did a carbon cleaning while we had the intake manifold off. And we pulled the injectors out with the intake manifold, so we also did a video on replacing injector seals. So I'll link those two videos in the description below, and uh, be sure to check those out. And don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss what kind of trouble we get into next. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.